Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at something I call the stop motion photo effect. All right, let's have a look at what I created first. I want to send a shout out to Michael Elliott. He's the editor that inspired me to do this. He did a great project for Canon, and I'll, I'll leave a link in the uh, description so you can check out his work. So to get this effect, we need to do two things, and that's export out still images on the frames we want to have happen, and also crop it down, because if you don't, then it's just a full screen, full screen. We want to crop it, making it look like there's just a bunch of photos uh, thrown down on the uh, frame. Two settings you really need to change before you do anything. It just makes things uh, easier. And that's change the still duration and the transition duration. If you've accidentally done step two, I guess, before we make these changes, if you've accidentally exported out all your stills and brought them in, the default is five seconds. It's actually easier to delete them and re-import them with this new setting. Let's go have a look. In the edit menu on Windows, the Premiere Pro me menu on Mac in preferences, go to timeline. And you can see up at the top, video transition default duration is in frames and it's 30. I'll change this to 10. And still image default is in seconds. We'll also make this 10. And if we go back and look at this here, you'll see we have a 10 second transition and a 10 second duration. So the, the images are constantly flowing into each other. At no point do you see the still image in its full screen. The other thing that, that helps this is the I've got the first frame. So if we turn the, the top off and look at the bottom, I have the first frame stretched out and then I just, change the opacity setting. So if I open up the opacity, I've got two keyframes in here where I've gone from 100% opacity to 48%. And what that does is, first of all, it helps establish that she is in the full frame. And then to accentuate the effect, I darken the background and then bring her in on top. This way it shows her relationship to the background um, and it's it does give you that otherworldly kind of effect. This, I think this works okay. You'll notice the, the, the men that are standing there, they don't change, although in the original video they do change. To me, this almost makes this effect more stunning in that they're standing there rock solid and she's flowing, it seems almost like she's flowing around them. Now you could, I'll show you in another example, have the bottom frame changing also. Okay, but let's again, put this together from scratch. So here is the um, video. And by the way, all the videos in this tutorial were supplied by Adobe Stock, the premier supplier of stock video, images, illustration, motion graphics, tem templates, and 3D objects. Find the perfect asset for your next creative project. And all the music is from my wonderful friends over at Artlist. Links are in the description. Okay, so here we've got the video and I just double clicked on it and loaded it in the source monitor. You don't have to put it in the timeline to do this next step. So now we'll export a bunch of still images and that's what this button is here. There is also an, a button over on the program monitor too. But if we click in this button here, we get to name this and I, I call this zero one. I think this part is essential. If you leave the default names, they're really long and it can be confusing. Here you want the, the numbers and when you drag them in the timeline, they'll be in the correct order. By default, this is uh, something else on the Mac, but on Windows, it's a um, bitmap file. I just changed mine to JPEG. I also had it import back in the project 
and browse to where you want to put this. Don't leave this on the default location. I made a whole bunch of folders in my demo project folder uh, for the man, the woman, and I had another one of the girls swinging around. So each folder has all the images. Don't just leave these jumble and please don't put these all over your desktop for crying out loud. So when you do that, you end up with a bunch of um, images. I'm just going to maximize my screen. And to put them into a folder, a real simple way to do this is to select all these. So shift select and drag them down here, drag them to the new bin and it'll make a new bin. And that's what I've done here. So with that done, I don't even need to open that up. I can drag the whole bin over here on the timeline. And this is where you'll notice if you left the default to um, five seconds, you'll notice them much longer. And if you've got two or three, you can change the duration. But if you've got um, a dozen or 30 or 40 or hundreds, it's way easier to delete them, change the pref, make the make it 10 frames, and then re-import them. Okay, so if I play this back right now, you'll just see a jerky video. That's one still image every 10 frames. So if I hold the Alt key on Windows, Option key on Mac, and drag this down, this is the first frame. And if I extend that out, I've now added, if I turn the top one off, that's the, the, the first frame all the way out to the, to the end. Now I can start cropping this. So I'll go to the second one, go to my effects, and type in crop. With this one selected, double click on it. And if I go to my effects controls, and you can see the name of that is quite long. Okay, so in my effects controls, I now have a crop effect. Open that up and change this crop value. And now I'm cropping into her. Let's turn off the bottom one so we can see that a little easier. So I'll crop her in crop it on the top. And you can also use your arrow keys. So if I click in here and hit up and down, add shift up and down, and, and uh, I can do it that way. Here's what I found that, that really helps this next step. So that is the first cropped frame. I now want to crop the second one. The first time I tried this, I just copied and pasted attributes with crop. And I found I did way too much changing on each frame. So I am going to copy this crop and paste it in. But before I do that, I want to go up to the sequence settings and choose selection follows playhead. And the reason I did that is watch this. When I move my playhead to the next clip, I need to, to turn on track targeting for V2. Now, whenever I move this, it selects that still image. If you don't do this, you, you'll accidentally be looking at one clip, but you'll be changing the crop value to a completely different clip that's selected. This is forcing you to see the one you're working on. Trust me, turn this on. I don't turn this on all the time, but for this kind of thing, I, I did. So I'm back over here in this one. I select the crop effect, so select the name, copy that, go to the next one and paste it. And you can see it's pasted in. Now I can change this, this setting. You want these to look a little bit different. Again, copy that one, go to the next one, paste it in over and over and over again. So I just keep doing that and get the final effect. Okay, so let's imagine I did all that. Okay, so I'm going to grab the first ones. And then all you're doing is just adding a transition. And by default, I like the cross dissolve. So the cross dissolve is, is in here. And if you take the cross dissolve out, and there is no way to remove um, transitions. I wish there was. So now she's in that frame jumping around. 
But if we select all of these and go to the effects, if we twirl down video transitions, dissolve, you'll notice cross dissolve has a blue outline. Premiere Pro allows you to designate one uh, transition as the default transition, which means Control D on Windows, Command D on Mac will apply default transition, and it'll do it to all of the clips that are selected. So you can do it at one time. So you see all of those selected, Control D, Command D, boom, there they are. They're still selected, so if you want to play with different transitions, you can do that. They're still selected if they're deselected, select them all again, but they're all selected. So if I wanted to, I could come down here to wipe and let's do this wipe. I'll just right click, set that as default, control command D, now there are a bunch of wipe effects and they're wiping across. Don't like that one, let's do a, we can do a slide. Same thing, right click, command control D. Now they're sliding in from the side. You'll notice some of these have these little accelerated icons and some don't. So I'm gonna do one that doesn't and I'll show you what happens. Watch the red line show up, control D. So now these are a transition that is not accelerated. The final output is going to look fine, but playback is gonna be horrible for two reasons. It's not accelerated, so it's not using your GPU to play back the transition quickly, and all the cuts are really, really fast, so your CPU is trying really hard to play them back and do all the transitions. So again, output's gonna look fine, um, but um, playback is gonna be iffy. I'm gonna go back to my cross dissolve, control D, boom. So there we go. Now, in this example, I wanna show you what I did with this guy. You'll see three layers here. So remember I said you could turn on the bottom layer as I've got on here, and the bottom layer is the stills without the, the uh, transition in it, and then the top is transitioning. But because this clip, if we open this up, because he's a vertical subject and the uh, scenery in the back has this horizontal view, I thought, well, what would happen if I duplicated everything and then created a horizontal crop and a vertical crop and I interplayed those two together? So you'll see by the time we get over here and I'll turn off the background, you'll see I've got two crops in here. So I've got the top one is, and it's also reduced transparency. If you have the top and the bottom, then they're the, the same, and I still want him to, to, uh, to stand out. So we still have the choppy, uh, stills of him, but when we got this nice vertical view of all of these columns showing up. So let me play that back for you. Now we could have more fun with this. One last thing I'll show you to turn the top off. If we wanted to, right now your eye sees that each frame is different, but it also sees the horizontal plane um, is equal. Well, imagine if you threw a bunch of, of still images on a table, they wouldn't all line up perfectly. They would be slightly all over the place. So if we do that, so I'll click on that one there. Again, let's, um, Let's use that selection follows playhead. Now when I go into my effects controls, open up motion and change the rotation around. Let's see what happens here. So now each one 
is moving around. So if we play that back, so there's yet another effect where they're jerking around like this. Now, the last thing I know some people would want to do, and forget it, go use After Effects, and that is make a white border around the outside, and you can't do this very easily. Um, remember, we've cropped it, so we have an alpha channel that's based on the crop, and if you come from an After Effects world, you can put a stroke on an alpha. Alpha meaning the transparency of wherever that is, is a stroke. There's no stroke capability in Premiere Pro. People have been asking for it for decades. Hey, Adobe, give us a stroke. A stroke on alpha would be perfect for this. If you really had to have this effect, then my suggestion would be to bring these still images into Photoshop crop them there and then put the, the frame on them and then bring them back and then you'd have to line them up. It would be uh, quite a bit of work. You could also, you could also stick a, a rectangle underneath and if these were all equal size, then one rectangle would work, but they're not, they're all over the place. So you'd have to create a bunch of rectangles. You could do it, but man, oh man, it would be a lot of work and I don't know how good the effect would be. I think this effect already looks pretty darn awesome. Okay. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, please take a moment and subscribe. It really does make a difference to us here. If you want to support us some more, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description and on the front of the channel. And we love all of our PayPal subscribers. You folks are wonderful. Thank you so much for supporting us. Many of you have, have been supporting us for years. I love it. Okay. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to help spice up your videos with new cool 